Ever wondered what happens when a courtroom turns out to be a stage for real-life drama? Courtrooms are equipped to serve justice to those in need, but at times these same courtrooms are somehow setting the stage for culprits to vent their anger. Number 5. This is Aubrey Trail, a 56-year-old man who was charged with the murder and improper disposal of a Nebraska woman named Sydney Loof, whom he met through the dating app Tinder. Bailey Boswell, who was Trail's girlfriend at the time of Loof's death, was also convicted as an active participant in Loof's death. It was a murder that shocked the U.S., where the culprits lured Loof to their apartment and engaged in a violent act against her. That includes the use of an extension cord, and she later took disturbing actions with her remains using tools they had acquired from a home improvement store. After the killing, they wrapped her remains in garbage bags and dumped them along a rural road. But what made this case even more shocking was Trail's attempt to slit his own throat during the courtroom outburst. Number 4. But you will be surprised to know what happened during the trial of Judge Tracy Hunter. Tracy Hunter was a juvenile court judge practicing in Hamilton County. She used her position as a juvenile court judge to backdate documents and mishandle confidential records to help her brother, who worked as a juvenile court employee. Once her act became public, an investigation started. In the end, she was convicted and sentenced to six months in jail. However, she appealed her conviction and sentence and remained free while the case went through various courts in 2019. Then, Hunter's last appeal was denied by Judge Patrick Dinkelacker. He upheld the previous conviction and sentenced her to six months in jail. Number 3. This 25-year-old man is Andrew Wirth. He was convicted of homicide by negligent use of a dangerous weapon in the deaths of Jennifer Lewick, an off-duty police officer, and her boyfriend, Greg Peters. It all started in a bar where Lewick grabbed Wirth behind on the dance floor, with Peter at her defense. They confronted Wirth outside the bar. Even though Wirth claimed his action as a part of self-defense, the witness said that Lewick initially survived Wirth's shot and asked for help. At the same time, Wirth was pointing a gun at Greg's head and yelling at him while walking away. But what made this case even more notorious was the drama that was born in the courtroom during the trial. During the trial, Wirth was charged with two first-degree intentional murders, and his bail was set at $1 million. That is where he lost his control and leaped towards the victim's families. The officers tried so hard to appease him, and he was later sentenced to 10 years. Number 2. The man in the video is Kenneth Freeman, a 28-year-old man who was accused of murdering Carly Bowden at Froterd Hospital on January 25, 2019. As per the reports, he allegedly beat Bowden, dragged her to the car, and drove over her several times, which resulted in her death. He was arrested right away and charged with first-degree intentional homicide. However, what happened during his court hearing is what makes this case stand out among others. During the trial, he started ranting, which was literally insulting the judge, prosecutors, and the victims. To cut that loss, the judge ordered the deputies to use a stun gun on him to stop. Later, he was ordered to stay in a mental institution due to his mental instability. Number one, now this is the ultimate. This man in this video is going to do something that will blow your mind. He is Christopher Clay Rudd. He was a suspect facing drug charges at a courthouse in Spanish Fork, Utah. On May 4, 2018, the court witnessed the unbelievable. Amidst the court order treatment, a handcuffed Clay Rudd, out of the blue, ran out of the courtroom and jumped over a second floor railing, falling about 20 feet to the ground below. He did survive the fall, even though he appeared to have bleeding from a head wound after the fall. He suffered severe injuries, which included a broken leg, a fractured pelvis, and a skull fracture. Now why would he do that? That remains a question forever. But the question one should ask oneself is, aren't we also a part of this craziness? Isn't it our failure as a civilized society? Comment down your opinions below. If you enjoyed these courtroom dramas, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more gripping legal content.